بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد When you have self-interest, that is the detrimental part. Because unless the people change from within, then you can't change that mindset. And the Prophet ﷺ was faced with this kind of group. And those were the elites of Quraysh. People like Abu Sufyan, Abu Jahl. These guys did not like what the Prophet ﷺ was introducing. Why? They were the elites of Quraysh. They had that club, the elites club, that caste system, the hierarchy. The rich, the wealthy, and then you had the poor. And then of course you had the slaves. Okay. When the Prophet ﷺ came and he started introducing equality, justice, fairness, Abu Jahl didn't like that. Abu Sufyan did not like that. Those elites, they used to come to the Prophet ﷺ complaining, protesting, objecting. How can you make us equal to such people? Those who have self-interests, it's impossible. It's very difficult to change them. Unless they change within themselves. You can win them over. And the Prophet ﷺ tried certain tactics to win those guys over. I'll come to that inshallah in the discussion. But the other three groups, those who may mistrust, those who may look at it from a different assessment, they assess the thing differently. And those who are just, let's go with the status quo. Those, how did the Prophet ﷺ win them over? Many things. First of all, communication is extremely important. And that's what the authors of this article I just mentioned also suggest. Communication is extremely important. Why? Because through communication you can explain to the people why you're doing this change. The Prophet ﷺ comes to the Muslims, comes to the people and says, قُولُوا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ تُفْلِحُوا Say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ and you'll win. You'll be successful. You'll have dignity. You'll have respect. Communication was extremely important. When it came to matters that the Muslims were involved in, such as battles, the Prophet ﷺ would consult them when it comes to battles, not when it comes to revelation. In other words, the Prophet does not talk to the Muslims and say, come, let's have a meeting. How many times do you want to pray in the day? How many rak'ats would you like to pray in Which the day? Which month in the year would you like to fast? Or you want to fast a month, two weeks, one week? No. These are matters of revelation. Allah reveals to the Prophet and He teaches. He tells them. And therefore, those matters, there were no consultations in social matters and matters that were related to them. Wars, because wars, they have to fight in the battle. If consequences happen, like in Uhud, they lost. They don't come and blame Rasulullah They were consulted. They were discussing amongst each other. Not that the Prophet needed their advice. Allah taught Rasulullah he is the one who sent among the people of Quraysh of Mecca or among the illiterates. Depends how you interpret Ummiyin. Rasulam minhum, a messenger of them. Who does not mean that the Prophet was illiterate. Huh? The Prophet knew how to read and write. He was never seen reading and writing though. That's just a clarification. Who teaches them, educates them, purifies them. So the Prophet did not need their advice, but it's good because they feel that they're part of the group. In Uhud, for example, when the Prophet ﷺ heard that a group of Muslim, uh, the Mushrikeen are coming to attack, he calls upon the Muslims. The Prophet himself ﷺ was of the opinion that we should stay in Medina and fight them in Medina. Let them come to Medina in the city and we fight them. Why? Because according to the Prophet's alliance with the Jews of Medina, if the Muslims are attacked in Medina, the Jews will come with them and they will defend. 
something really so interesting. The Prophet ﷺ formed an alliance with the Jews of Medina. And one of the terms is protection. Muslims protect them, they protect the Muslims when the fight happens in Medina. So the Prophet ﷺ was of the opinion that let us fight in Medina. So then we can get the Jews fighting with us, bigger numbers. So we can win the battle. But some of the enthusiasts, young people of Medina, the Ansar, they were enthusiastic. So they got up. They said, no, Ya Rasulullah, we have never allowed anyone to step foot on our city. Now you want us to bring the kuffar, the mushrikeen in our city, the people of Mecca? Never. We will go fight them outside of Mecca, of Medina. Then the people got encouraged. You know how sometimes you have two loud voices and then they mobilize everybody else. So if they mobilize people and the people of Medina said, yes, this is what we're going to do. So the Prophet Sallallahu then agreed with the consensus of the group. Although when the Prophet says, let's fight in Medina, technically speaking, you should not be saying, no, let's do something else. He said in Medina, khalas, fight in Medina. But the Prophet agreed. Is this what you want? Fine. Let's go. He went, so they chose. When it comes to such matters, consult them. The Prophet ﷺ made it clear to them why we need to defend. He consulted them, he communicated with them, he kept everything clear to them. And hence, they joined Rasulullah ﷺ, they supported Rasulullah ﷺ. Of course. So communication was important. The Prophet communicated with them. The Prophet ﷺ not just communicated. Communication was good. He made it clear to them why you need to do this. Second thing the Prophet ﷺ is he showed that he cares about them. He cares about them. And this is something that those two authors mention actually. Show your staff that you care about them. You're introducing this change for their own good, for the good of the company, which will come back to them. The Prophet ﷺ used to look after the Muslims. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ A messenger has come from amongst yourselves who cares about you. He's compassionate amongst the believers. Merciful. He cared about them, only them, even the enemies. This famous incident where the Prophet Sallallahu would walk and someone would throw garbage on the Prophet Sallallahu One day he walks by and he doesn't see the garbage. He inquires, where is the individual? They say, the individual is sick, is not feeling well. The Prophet goes and visits the individual offers assistance. How can I help you? So this person then becomes a Muslim from the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That's compassion, that love, that respect he offered to people. He earned their trust. Not only that, he had the knowledge, the ilm. One way to earn people's trust is to be knowledgeable. If people ask a question to the leader and the leader says, I don't know, I don't know. Well, they will never trust this leader. The Prophet had the knowledge. Whenever he was asked, he gave the advice. In addition, the Prophet ﷺ worked with the Muslims. He was not the leader, the kind of a leader who just gives orders and lets the Muslims go. Ammar ibn Yasir says, when we were building the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, we would carry one brick at a time. The Prophet carries two bricks at a time. We get tired. We want to take a break. We find him working hard. He becomes an inspiration to us. When they were dig digging the trench in the Battle of Al-Khandaq, the Prophet digs with them. It is stated that Fatima alayhi salam brings him some food. He tells her, Ya Fatima, this is the first bite I had in three days. He's with them. So when they see such a leader who is with them, feels what they feel, does what they do. As they say, he walks the walk, he talks the talk and walks the walk. Then they trust that leadership. So the Prophet ﷺ communicated with his companions, made sure that they understand the essence of the message. He cared for them, looked after them. He worked with them. He had the knowledge 
and five he brought them a message which was great and useful and of benefit to them something that's useful something of value he brought them a valuable message for which he did not ask for anything in return except for one thing to look after his progeny that's it that's the only thing he asked for and that was not for himself it was for the people themselves whatever reward I've asked you for it's actually for you it's not for me it's not going to decrease my status with Allah or increase it nor will it decrease the status of my progeny with Allah or increase it it's you who will benefit you who will gain so that is what the Prophet ﷺ did he introduced the message he brought the message of value he transformed that society when he gained their trust when they saw him they started loving Rasulullah because he transformed their lives among the transformation that the Prophet ﷺ introduced is respecting humanity for the sake of humanity for their humanity not because of cultural values traditional values racial values but rather for the sake of humanity itself even those who were having some self-interests that we mentioned in the beginning people like abu sufyan muawiyah ibn abi sufyan those whom the quran describes as al muallafa quloobuhum those who don't really you know they join islam to get the benefit from it when the battle of Hunayn took place which was a year after the conquest of mecca a year later the battle of Hunayn against ta'if that was a big battle Hunayn amir al-mu'mineen salamullah alayhi by himself he went among the mushrikeen killed the man who holds their banner took the banner broke it down and single-handedly brought 100 prisoners single-handedly to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. when the muslims saw that the banner of the mushrikeen is now broken 100 prisoners are there next to rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, they were encouraged to go back they were encouraged to go back in hunayn then they had a big victory after that after that they went they, they had a big victory the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, then told the ansar he said i'm gonna take the booty of this battle hunayn which was a big booty they got lots of wealth from it i'm gonna distribute it to all the people of mecca who became muslim after Islam, after the conquest of mecca people like abu sufyan people like muawiyah those people they will get all the wealth some people got upset the ansar the people of Medina, they became upset. And then the hypocrites started to say, spread rumors. Look, ah, the minute he goes back to his people, he's giving all the wealth to his people. See, that's the man whom you sheltered, you took care of, and so on and so forth. When the prophet heard this, he went on to immediately to a place, an elevation, and he called the Muslims, and he called the Ansar. He said, Ya Ayyuhal Ansar, O oh Ansar, you are the people who supported. You're the people who came to my help. And I am the one who brought you the message. I am the one who brought you this and so on and so forth. Until he tells them, now, do you want to claim that you have done a favor to me by supporting me? I am Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. I saved you from the hellfire. But if that's what you want, we will give you. Fine, we'll give you your share. Then the Ansar started crying and they said, no, Ya Rasulullah, khalas, never. Sorry, we apologize. Our share is your share. You distribute it any way you want. Anyways, so those who had self-interest, the Prophet tried to buy their love. He gave them money. All the booty of Hunayn was given to them. So maybe through the wealth, they will start to kind of follow Islam. They say, you know what? Islam does serve our interest at the end of the day. We will get something out of Islam. So that is fine. So let us follow Islam. So even those who had self-interest, the Prophet tried to work with them. Tried to communicate with them. Give them some money. Teach them, educate them. 
And these were some of the transformations that happened within the 23 years that the Prophet Sallallahu <coughs> invested with the Muslims. These 23 years, he transformed them from a group of nomads who were living in a tribal manner into a big mighty force that is now fighting against the Romans and the Persians. Big, huge empires. That is not a simple thing, huh? Yani imagine within 23 years, you transform this group of people who are living as tribes, individuals. All of a sudden now they're, they're united. The entire Arabia is united. Yemen, Bahrain, all that region, that whole region is now under the banner of Islam. And now they're in the borders of the Roman Empire, what we could call today Jordan, Syria, Iraq. They were at that border, that, that border, that region. And hence, shortly after Rasulullah, even during his time, they were fighting against the Romans. Shortly after him, they fought against the Persians and they conquered the Persians. So, how did that transformation is a huge transformation? He transformed the society from being a society of tribes. No civilization into to writers, into readers, into thinkers, intellectuals, where Thomas Carlyle, who is a British writer, in 1840, 1840, he gave a lecture series titled The Heroes. In one of them, he speaks of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad Wa Alaihi Muhammad. Where he speaks about him and he says, I'm paraphrasing his word, but if you want, you can go look it up. It's online, available. The Heroes is the title of his series. And in one of them is about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi It says how the Prophet transformed this group of nomads into this force that within a hundred years from his message, they were ruling two thirds of the world. Two thirds of the world was governed by the Muslims. Within a hundred years. So he says, indeed, this man is a hero who managed to make such a transformation into his followers, into his companions.